Universal has theme parks all around the world. These include Universal Studios Hollywood, Universal Orlando Resort, Universal Studios Japan, the Beijing Resort, and Universal Studios Singapore. They, just like Disney, are everywhere. But, unlike Disney, Universal does not have a presence in Europe. But that wasn't always the case. Oh, Welcome to the Main Street News. Today we will explore the past and future of Universal in Europe. If you're new to the channel and enjoy the video, please consider subscribing and liking. Let's jump in. Our journey starts, surprisingly, with Michael Eisner, the then CEO of the Walt Disney Company. You see, in 1983, the Tokyo Disney Resort opened, and it was an instant success. And the House of the Mouse soon shifted their eyes to Europe, which had an amazingly underexplored market, or so they thought. 1,200 possible locations later, they decided that the resort will be built in the small town of marne la vallee During the construction of the Disney Resort, Universal started to think that if Disney can do it, so can we. And since it was owned by the French company Vivendi, they wanted to build something close to home. The plan was simple, build a theme park to compete with Disney in Europe. In 1990, with plans already in full swing on the Disney front, Universal also wanted a piece of the pie and began searching for vacant land across Europe. One of the places that they landed on was Melungsenar, a village just 30 minutes from marne la vallee They quickly went to the drawing board and began designing how this theme park slash studio slash resort slash, well, you get the idea, should look like. And here it is. I went ahead and colored it for easier understanding. So, without getting into a lot of detail, here it is. The bigger part is the theme park and studio, which is very similar in layout to the Floridian Park. We would also get a water park, a big amphitheater, sports complex, golf facilities, and then a lot of offices. The resort would also receive seven hotels, a big shopping area, housing, and other less interesting stuff. Also, note that two huge expansion lots would be spared for future development. These could double the size of the resort. So, now that the plan is complete, let's start building. Well, no. Since Euro Disney was almost complete, Universal decided to stay low and let Disney test the waters. And, oh boy, were they surprised. If you don't already know, Euro Disney failed its opening, financially speaking, which would later bring a loss of millions of dollars in operational costs. Universal chose not to make a billion dollar mistake and pulled out from France, but not from Europe. Universal then started looking at other possible locations and found in 1995 a suitable place to build their newest theme park. So now, with a little more confidence, they got back to the drawing board and boom, a theme park was designed for Krefeld, Germany. We have a lot more information regarding this park, so let's jump in. You would enter the park via a soundstage called Cine Walk, much like the Walt Disney Studios Park in Paris. In here, you could find several shops, a 3D theater and Mel's Dinner. After leaving the enclosed entrance, you would be greeted by the classic Universal Globe, right in front of a huge man-made lake that would tie all the lands together. After turning left, you would enter the first land of the park, Television Land. In here, you could find a Western stunt show, a wooden roller coaster themed to Hercules' The Legendary Journeys, and the Sequest Adventure attraction, based on the TV series with the same name. Moving forward, you would enter the biggest and most exciting land, Movie Land, starting with no other than Jurassic Park. After passing by a huge T-Rex, you'd find Raptor Tramp, a classic flying swingers attraction, and at the back, a Jurassic Park Rapids, very similar to the one in Singapore. Moving on from the dinosaur-infested land, 
you could see Monster Mash, a show with Universal's most famous villains. And then you would enter a New York land that would feature one of the signature attractions of the park, a King Kong drop tower, called King Kong Tower, that would feature a very impressive recreation of the Empire State Building and a huge King Kong statue. An attraction that very little is known about is the Apollo 13 Moonshot. Some believe that it would be an indoor roller coaster, like Space Mountain. Twister, the famous special effect ride from other Universal Parks, would also make an appearance. And, my favorite, an amazing Back to the Future Land would be featured in this part of the park. You could wander around the iconic 2015 Hill Valley, and even enter the courthouse, where you would find a main attraction, the Back to the Future Time Warp Roller Coaster. This would make you roll around the park and you would almost be King Kong's lunch before returning back to 2015. The last of the lands would be Cartoon Land, a kid-friendly land that would feature a Casper the Friendly Ghost Omnimover attraction called Spooky Adventures, an animal actor stage show, a family coaster called Bad Rock Bomber, themed to the Flintstones, E.T.'s Green Planet, where you could walk on E.T.'s home world, Cruising USA, which would be similar to Disney's Autopia, and a petting zoo, for the smaller ones. This project was much more planned than the other we discussed. So this one actually happened, right? No, it did not. This time it wasn't because of any outside reasons. It was actually because Universal's parent company, Vivendi, the one that wanted to build a theme park in Europe in the first place, was getting rid of Universal and sold most of the part to the American brand NBC, which didn't believe that the European resort should be their top priority, or any priority, as a matter of fact. Universal presents Universal Mediterranean. Feel the most intense emotions. Surround yourself with the funniest characters. Discover surprising shows. Challenge the power of the gods. In 1998, five years before completing the merger with NBC, Universal bought 40% of the Spanish park Port Ventura, and then later changed the name to Universal Port Ventura before changing it again to Universal Mediterranean, making it the first Universal park in Europe. This park was already established, and the partnership proved to be successful. But either way, NBC, that now owned most of Universal, sold all interest on the resort to La Caixa. And while some branding continues in the park, the name was once again changed back to Port Aventura. These weren't the only projects that Universal had for Europe. There was also, somewhere in time, a Universal London, but it was more of the same, so we won't go into detail on that one. Now, we know the past. What's going on with the future? Well, in these past few years, Universal has been investing more and more in their theme parks. Just last year, they opened their newest park, Universal Beijing, which saw an investment of about 6 billion euros on their part, according to the Wall Street Journal. And let's not forget the third park that will transform the Universal Orlando Resort, Epic Universe, which is on track to open in 2025, and is supposed to be the biggest Universal theme park in the US. So, as you can see, Universal is really investing a lot into theme parks, and still, one place that they don't have any sort of presence is in Europe. While as of now there's nothing planned, I could definitely see Universal wanting to build a park to explore the European market, and after checking, the plot of land that was used to plan the Paris resort is still available. So, Universal, if you're listening, your turn. And that's it for Universal Europe Resort. 
If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. As always, thank you for joining us for this week's video, and that's a wrap.